Hi everybody, this is John Blackstone. Welcome from rainy Seattle, Washington. I'm hiding in my car right now, filming this quick introduction. So this is one of the most unusual projects I've ever done. And in my many years on YouTube, I've never seen anyone do something quite like this before. I'm a huge fan of comedy. Half of my film library is comedy. I'm just a huge fanatic. And one of my all-time favorite comedians is Norm MacDonald. And when he passed away, there was a real outpouring of love and appreciation for him. Uh, just such a uniquely brilliant comedian. And out of the countless things you can watch on YouTube, one of my favorite things are the appearances he made on the Dennis Miller radio show. And one day I thought it would be cool to create a visual accompaniment for these conversations. Brilliant comedians who clearly love one another and you hear their friendship in the conversation and their mutual respect for each other, how much fun they had talking to each other. And it's certainly clear how much Dennis Miller adored Norm MacDonald. There are so many great stories and interesting little moments, and I encourage you to listen on headphones or earbuds so you can really hear the nuances, especially when Norm is on the telephone. It's just so fun to listen to. I hope that this visual accompaniment makes it a richer experience. Maybe for some people it will be distracting. I don't know, but I just felt compelled to do this. This is my way of paying homage to Norm MacDonald, a guy that I really admire. And if you enjoy this, please let me know in the comments give me a thumbs up because I only did a small portion of their conversation and I would love to do the rest of it but I need to know if it's something you folks enjoy so let me know right now here is Norm Macdonald on the Dennis Miller show we were to have Norm Macdonald but he is can't what no he's actually on what Norm what Dennis <laughs> You're a freaking genius. Can I tell you that that plane ride you were on and that Twitter jag, I followed it for like five hours. God, that was funny, man. <laughs> oh, well, when I was tweeting? Yeah, it was killing me, Norm. I was watching some games or something, and I had the Twitter on, and I just kept following your tweets, and I could see you trapped on the plane going through the uh, sleeve on the front of the seat in front of you and pulling everything out. Hey, look at this porta kiln in the airport store and stuff like I that. Know, I was running out of stuff. I, I was running. <laughs> Stuff. Now, Norm is... Uh, so Norm stuff on a plane, but uh, have you heard about this uh, Huckleberry Finn thing? <laughs> uh, I heard something about they wanted to take the uh, uh, the N-word out, right? Yeah, anyways, I wanted to bring it up before I forgot, and then we'll get on to my, uh, my project. <laughs> All right, do you have any observation on it, any tweak on it, or just the, the cognizance of the fact that they want to no, get it? No, well, I feel it's a thorny issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, yeah. no, that, was, that wasn't the whole thing. No. I thought you were going to go, like, well, how so? Or something like that. <laughs> Tell us more, Norm. Why don't you well, do... Uh, I feel it's a thorny issue. Yeah, I'll tell me you why. too. Why, Norm? <laughs> well, you got Mark Twain, and, you know, and you're talking about, I mean, uh, for those of you who don't know, you know, what I'm talking about, they've they've taken out us the N-word, you know, out of many of the books of Huckleberry Finn. You know? Norm, they've taken out. And uh, so you got to... A thorny issue that I think I, I, I have a solution to. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hear it? Oh, no, man. Please. Never never anything more. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the thorny issue is this. Yeah. You know, you don't want to take, you know, Mark Twain, you know, one of the greatest writer ever to <laughs> brush paper with ink, you know, <laughs> and, and, and change his words, for God's sake. <laughs> On the other side of the of the coin, you don't want to have a young African American boy in school, you know, hearing that word out loud and uh, and causing him pain. So it's a thorny issue. <laughs> but I figure it this way: you've read Huckleberry Finn. You are so splendidly <laughs> demented. Yeah, I've read it. I've read it. You you know it's written in the first person by Huckleberry. By Huckleberry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. And you know it includes the N-word. Yes. Therefore, you just change Huckleberry Finn to a black kid. <laughs> <laughs> and everything's 
It's like a rap song at that point, right? Exactly. Everything's cool. Right. Now, let's get to my project. <laughs> now, listen, not, was there any was there any sort of Samuel Clemens no, in No, he's <laughs> he's made his fortune. Was there any subtle disparagement in the homosexual community when you said Huckle Ferry bin? Because, <laughs> you know, somewhere out there there's a gay kid in high school. So but, uh, now, something slipped up there. <laughs> Some gear, some cog got meshed up. There's five comedians on the planet I'd set the TiVo for, or better yet, be in front of the screen for an hour comedy special. It's Norm. He's calling it Me Doing Stand-Up. It premieres Saturday, <laughs> March 26th at 1130, 1030 Central. Stormin', are you proud of it? Is it? Are you doing it live, or is it in the can already, and how'd it go? No, it's in the can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you... They let me. Uh, they let me edit it. I was always afraid to do a stand-up special. You know. No, when you when you chortled after in the can, was that another subtle disparagement of the imaginary high school gay kid? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> You're a tricky boy. But they let me edit the special, so I was really happy to uh, to. Because I was always afraid, you know. Because a lot of times, like when they, when they, I've seen those specials, and uh, like you, you remember the old, you remember old Johnny Carson. Uh, believe me, I'm obsessed. Yeah, and uh, well, he would. Well, you were on the old Johnny Carson show. I wore an ascot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I wore an ascot. The Germans wore gray. Well, they would shoot a comic from the, you know, from the, from his belt to his the top of his head, and, and uh, everything was like. fine. Mm-hmm. I'm reading your tweets here, man. They're hilarious. Uh, I think of you as Mark Twait. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it cracks me up is when you compare Gaddafi to Stuart Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I do that every third tweet. <laughs> Norman, you know that's Don Adams. You probably know that. <laughs> Do you? St- <laughs> that's Don Adams' brother. Margolin is. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. But then now it makes sense because uh, when I met him at Hefts, they called him Agent Sixty Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Norman, do you still have the? Pu- are you still doing the Holocaust denier puppet? Is he still with you? Uh, it turned out he's wildly unsuccessful. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Norman, you are a freaking genius. And you know who I was talking about? Your tweets. I had dinner with Steve a while back, and I said, "You following Norm?" And he said, "Genius, man." So uh, we we wait with bated breath for your next message. Steve Martin. Yeah. What you know that dude? Yes, I do. Oh my God, man! I can. I can barely get dinner with Todd Glass going. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him to take you to that Greek place near the old ship in Philly. It's beautiful. You know how you get to Todd Glass? You have to go through the legendary Wid. Yes. That was my Philly connection back then. Todd Glass, by the way. Christian, try to get Todd on. That's He's got a brilliant rat-a-tat uh, delivery. All right, Norman, let me lay these down, because these are important, because this guy's a genius. High Stakes Poker, Norm's going to be the host. That airs Saturdays at 8 p.m. 7 Central on the Game Show Network. He's got a sports show. Can I come on this with you? Oh, uh, that'd be the greatest, man. That'd be my dream. Well, I don't... You know, you're the first guy ever give me a job in this uh, in this hard tack town. You know, we had Mark Brazil. You look back at that staff, man. Huh? I feel like Sid Caesar. You and Drake, Mark Brazil, Rooney. How funny was that room? Yeah. Killer room. I remember you guys... I put- remember one time... Uh, 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 <laughs> Well, you can't. One I think time, uh, Mark Brazil, who always used to do a lot of jokes about, it, he'd go, "We have to take, we have to take down Rush Limbaugh." Like he'd write <laughs> like three Rush Limbaugh jokes a day. And then I remember you went and Simon a thing going, "I kind of like Rush. You kind of make sense." And Mark Brazil, like jaw dropped. <laughs> I know, but he always liked me. We he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we had political differences, but Norm used to share an office with another comic genius named Drake Sather, and you guys tinfoiled your windows over. And I think you were both smoking at that point. And I'd periodically open a door around an hour before the show and go, "Hey guys, got anything?" It was pitch black. I'd see two cigarette ashes and go, "We'll let you know." Boom. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the story about when Drake and I went to a movie writing course? No. <laughs> we, go to the, we go to the UCLA thing, you know, it's 10 hours a day for three straight days, so it's me and Drake, we think we're going to write a movie, you know. 
<laughs> so stupid. <laughs> so we sit in the back, and McGee starts telling the story. So he opens, and we're lost, like, immediately, you know, <laughs> within the first couple of hours of this 30-hour course. But uh, in, his, in his opening uh, remarks, McGee said that it's all about the art of the storytelling, you know. Right. And he said, it doesn't matter the content of the story. It's how you tell it. He goes, we all know people who, you know, they're... Their, you know, their child died that morning, you know, and uh, and they tell the story, and it's it's very dry. Whereas other people could tell you about losing change on a bus, and make the story captivating, you know. So it's all about the telling of the story. So uh, Drake and I were sitting there for the rest of the thirty hours, and just like every couple of minutes, Drake would would turn to me uh, with some variant of the following. He'd go, uh, he go, listen, Marge. Uh, that yeah, story about that dead son of yours is a bit of a bit of a yawner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've heard Lucy's story about uh, losing change on the bus this morning, but uh, <laughs> I want to take a few pointers. <laughs> That's a good Drake impression, too. I ever tell you that time Leno was lecturing up at the improv one night on Melrose, you know, and in a nice way, Jay always would tell the young comics about it. And uh, he's got his Arthur Conan Doyle pipe out, and he's I always <laughs> tell you 10 best jokes. You don't save them for the next thing. You don't know if there is a next time. So we sit there for around 40 minutes, and then at the end, uh, Jay said, Okay, guys, I gotta go. And, uh, you know, he's got a fire truck outside or something. He's driving, and, <laughs> and Drake, Drake looks at it, he takes a draw on his cigarette. He goes, Hey, thanks, Jay, but I got a father. <laughs> <laughs> God, he was funny. I miss Drakester. All right, Norm MacDonald, Me Doing Stand-Up, premieres Saturday, March 26th at 11.30, 10.30 Central on Comedy Central, right after the rebroadcast of the Donald Trump Roast. And The Sports Show with Norm MacDonald premieres on Comedy Central on Tuesday, April 12th at 10.30 p.m., 9.30 Central. This is a true comedy genius. Norman, I love you. Good to talk to you. Thanks, Dan. Talk at you down the road. A true genius, and I haven't read, I haven't uh, tweeted or read Norm's tweets lately. But uh, there was one day where Norm was on a cross country flight, as I'm about to be in a few hours here, two hours, and he tweeted all the way across the country. And I'm telling you, it reads like Candide. <laughs> it, it, it is, it is absolutely hysterical. The great Norm Macdonald, Stormin. Hey man, what are you traveling across the country? Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going back to New York today. Where are you at? I'm in Los Angeles. All right, I'm in Los Angeles, the city of. Uh... <laughs> no, but uh, <laughs> I'm not Spanish. Listen, I don't know everything. But uh, uh, what are you going to do in New York? <laughs> Wish that you were there, quite frankly, so you could have dinner with you. Where do you like to eat in New York, Normie? What do you like? I like Wally and Joseph's. Oh, you know, uh, Bernie used to take me there. Did Bernie take you there first? Oh, no, I, he didn't. Bernie Brillstein took me there, and they have the killer steaks and a nice bowl of pasta, too, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's this other uh, restaurant that was right across from my apartment. It's called... Uh, it's called uh, 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 Patsy's, uh, Patsy's? No, sure, I've been to Patsy's. That's Sinatra's old haunt. Roger Ailes always takes you there when he wants to have lunch with you. So one time I was, uh, one time I was, uh, it was after the smoking ban, you know, they just put a smoking ban in where you couldn't smoke. Yeah. And, uh, I guess this joint, uh, was run by some, some friends of Frank Sinatra. Yes, let's you know say what I'm saying. It. Yes, I do know what you're saying. So, uh, I, I went outside to smoke a cigarette, you know, because he couldn't smoke inside. Then this guy comes out, he goes, nah, you come, you smoke inside. You know, I'm like, nah, nah, it's against the light. He goes, you come, you smoke inside. You know, it's all right. <laughs> so then, like, I'm just sitting alone at this table. A guy puts a giant ashtray in front of me. I'm smoking this. Everyone's walking. Everyone's looking at me. <laughs> But it was like I was a maid, you know what a maid man is? Yeah, I know what a maid man is, baby. I remember one night Gotti wanted my autograph for somebody at the Columbus Cafe, and I went back and met those guys, and you're, you're, it's fascinating in a way to watch that power. You know, you're supposed to be repulsed by it completely, but there's something intoxicating about guys who are that, uh, let's say sure of themselves right who the teflon don yeah he used to hang at that columbus cafe joint not a lot but i saw him in there once and they so said he asked for your autograph nah some kid uh, he knew a kid i think it was his daughter maybe i'm wrong but uh, they said he wants an autograph for this kid so i went back and signed it oh that's pretty cool what
one time uh, Rob Schneider was telling me, like, you know, if like someone recognizes you, you like them, kind of. Yeah. So he was um, he was down in uh, the studio. This is before I was there, but they used to have Donahue down there. Right. And so uh, uh, Football Williams was there, the guy who threw the brick at Reginald Denny's head. <laughs> Oh, he was on Donahue, so he's like dressed up in a suit and everything, and they were in the bathroom. And then Schneider like couldn't recognize him first. He goes, "Oh man, that's the guy that you know, threw the brick." And then, uh, and then all of a sudden, football looks at uh, Schneider, and goes, "You the copy guy, man? You're hilarious." <laughs> then Schneider said he liked him. <laughs> <laughs> the Brickmeister. The Brickmeister. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? Are you going to do a flick? Are you out on the road? Give me something. Give me I'm something. I'm on the road, man. I'm, uh, I'm traveling. Uh, I'm traveling across this great land like, uh, uh, like you. <laughs> but, um, so your your similes today like a little punch on the back end. <laughs> Like, oh, I, was, I was trying to think. Nobody sets them up like you, though. I'm telling you, you get up to that like, and you've got uh, you've got power. And then the back end is. Uh... <laughs> no, yeah, I hope it. I hope it comes to me uh, during this. Similes, Norm. Can I tell you, similes come to me like uh, like. Uh, you see what I did there? <laughs> no, you're a master of those. <laughs> But, uh, no, I'm doing that. Oh, no, I'm in a movie. What do you got? What do you got? Uh, no, you know when people go, hey, my movie's coming out, and then it turns out it's Sandler's movie, and you're in it for five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you know those actors? They're like, yeah, I got this new TV show. It's called The Adventures of Old Christine. And you're like, what? That's not yours. <laughs> but, uh, no, Sandler, you know, every uh, once a year, Sandler will throw me a bone. And then... Uh, He'll desperately try to write me into the script. <laughs> but uh, he's playing this, uh, uh, he's in this movie where he plays a lady and uh, his twin sister. I mean, a man and his twin sister, a lady. Wow. And then I go out with, I go out with Adam Sandler, but he's, he's, a, he's a lady, you know, so that's cool. Wow. Well, I used to, I, I used to love it when you two would make out at SNL. What? So. <laughs> One time they made me make out with Neilan. Uh, I, I, <laughs> like, I was not just a writer. <laughs> and then like they, they write the sketch, and they're like, uh, and then the, the idea was Neilan was at a bar, and Heather Locklear was over on the other side, and they were looking at each other and trying to top each other. So then uh, Heather Locklear starts making out with a dude, and then Neilan like makes out with me. Oh, I remember this. And I then think. if a guy kisses you, man. Oh my God! You remember it for so much longer than if a girl kisses you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's. Uh, and he has that big head and everything. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. He's big on head. Now listen. Speaking of turning up in movies, imagine my shock when you came into Jane Eyre wearing. Uh, <laughs> what the hell was that about? Just something for dental benefits or something? Oh, uh, but you know, it was funny when I was on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> when I was on Saturday Night Live, uh, Milos Forman, the esteemed or the estimable director. Uh, of One Flew Over the Amadeus Nest. Yeah. So he would uh, watch uh, Saturday Night Live, and he, so he liked to update. He barely understood English. Yes. Well. But, uh, he, so he, he goes, oh. The, uh, so anyways, he, he invites me to go eat with him at uh, Nobu every week, right? Yes. And so it's me, him, two of his friends, and these guys are from Europe. And they're smart. They know everything, these two guys. <laughs> and him, you know? And they're talking about, like, they know nothing about popular culture. Right. It's all like, oh, did you see the, 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 the black, the guy's best friend is Vaclav Havel. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to get through it, you know? And then, so finally I knew one thing, you know? I was like, because uh, when I was young, there was a uh, there was an insurrection in uh, in my home province in Canada of Quebec, you know. Yeah, so you were going to throw that down the yeah, cool. Yeah, so I, I started uh, I started talking about the uh, the Front de Libération de Quebec and their uh, and their uh, terrorism of the uh, early seventies. Then this guy knows more than I do about it. Yeah. Almost, yeah, they know everything. And then Milos Forman, he's like, "I'm working on a new script." He goes, "How do you feel about freedom of speech?" I'm like, "I don't care. Who cares about that?" <laughs> he's like, "What?" He's like, "I lived through seven different regimes." I'm like, "Okay." Yeah. <laughs> Strange bedfellows. All of a sudden, he's looking at you like uh, with that blank stare, like Chief at the end of Cuckoo's Nest. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's got the Will Sampson lilt. 
That was the guy's name. Yeah, listen. What's you know. the guy's name? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever read the book? The book is written in the in the in the from the narrative of the chief. Look at you, Norm. Behind the scenes, you're a genius, aren't you? <laughs> No, I just read one book. <laughs> All right. So that's the only book you've ever read. We just happened to bring it up during here. <laughs> no, but that was a great book. He, I read that Kesey uh, uh, went to him, uh, worked in a mental hospital or something. Right, he did. And and, 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 and gobbled LSD by the handful. <laughs> Well, good to know our lunatics are in the hands of Doc Ellis. Do you, know Doc, you know Doc Ellis pitched a no-hitter on LSD. I know. Have you seen the uh, cartoon of that? No. I oh, it's, uh, I, no, because I always thought maybe that was a myth. But then on the Internet, they have uh, Doc Ellis actually talking about it. you got to check that out. It's www.youtube. Uh, <laughs> All right, Norman. What are you up to, man? I hope I see you soon. I miss you. How's you get the boy packed off to college? Everything good? Oh uh, yeah, man. I, I, you, I guess you've already been through that. Yeah, it's sad, man. Holy Lord, it's sad, man. There's a there's a, a Dylan sized hole in my heart. Yeah. Does your boy have any of your chops? Is he quirky, funny? No, uh, he, yeah, he's a good boy. Yeah, he, he's quirky, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I I know you love him, Norm. It is tough, man. It, you get all serious with yourself. I know comedians tend to goof through life. Then the Bambino's not there. It gets real serious, brother. Yeah, it does. You're supposed to let them be free and stuff. But uh, if it was up to me, I'd lock them in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Hannibal Lecter, home yeah. time. All right. Good to talk to you, Normie. I love you. You're a genius. You okay. know that. Hey, say hi to Nikki for me. All right. I will. Who's that? Nick DiPaolo. Oh, Nikki. Right I, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you were. Was that a surprise? No. No, a no. Surprise. I he thought you were forgot. talking. For some reason, a girl popped into my head or something. <laughs> I will. I'll say hi to DiPaolo. By the way, Norm, we would have accepted Charles Kurout or uh, Kerouac. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> just, just so you know. <laughs> How do you know that stuff? What sense, Christian? He was looking for I Go Across the Country Like. Oh, Kuralt or Kerouac they would have or both been fine. Uh, let me see. Uh, Lewis and Clark. Harry, <laughs> they would have been good, too. Harriet Tubman on a roadie. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll talk at you, Norman. <laughs> Well, folks, we were supposed to be joined this segment by the great Norm McDonald. What's that? What's that, Christian? He's with us. <laughs> New way, <laughs> Norm. Yeah, that's why. Why are you? Why are you making a joke? Is somehow? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, God forbid I do that. Let me read some of these tour dates off for Norm, by the way. And uh, can I tell you? Uh, I've often said there's five guys on the planet. I, I get up out of my chair and go pay my money to see. <laughs> Nobody funnier than Norm McDonald. Norm, the last time I talked to you, you were working with a puppet. Does that still hold true? <laughs> Why? They're not called puppets, man. Oh, I'm sorry. What are they? Ventriloquist uh, dummies. <laughs> <laughs> and even that is a little uh, epithetic. But, uh... <laughs> what, 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 what would you... What would you imagine they'd like to be called in a perfect Well, world? I call them my friends. Yeah, <laughs> my friends in the bag. <laughs> Christian wanted me to do this, but I don't, I don't know where that bag is. What, what, were, what were some of the puppets? Who, who was your rat pack in there? I, I had, the... Well, I had my, my regular guy, Brad. <laughs> he's, my, he's just my buddy, you know. And then I, I got this old man, and I had trouble with him. He's, he's too cranky. Right, right. And it turned out. I don't even want. I don't even want to mention it, what, what he believed. And weren't you? Weren't you also beginning to work with a young Chippewa girl? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> now that one was too expensive. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I wish I could find my Richard Nixon doll because now they have that Frost Nixon debate. Yes. And I, I do have a Richard Nixon doll. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I don't. I, now I'm calling him a doll, but. Um, <laughs> He's somewhere, but I haven't even started working with him on the road because uh, I'm not very good at it yet. No, no. If you use the Nixon doll, you have to hold him, hold his arms up and have him say, I am not a doll. Uh, <laughs> Man, that impression was, I would say that's about equal to Frank Langella's. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. No I'm, I'm, no, I'm serious. Thank you. Frank Langella sucks. 
<laughs> as Dracula, no doubt. Now, listen, where you been? You been on the road? You got any road antics for me? What's happening out there? Well, in the, well, in the heartland? Yeah, where you been? Some of these dates, you're getting out there into the tertiary markets, my friend. Oh, yeah, man. I play I play small nightclubs in, mm-hmm. the, in the heartland. You take I'll tell you in- one thing, they love you. Me? Yeah, they're always like, I want to give me a dentist next. Wow, that's cool, man. I didn't know we were out there. I didn't even know I had an affiliate in Medicine Hat. Now, what do you do when you're up in Medicine Hat? You get off the stage at, what, 930? You're looking to cruise. Where do you go? To some well, I don't bar drink. where you buy drinks with pelts? Or what's happening up there? No, unfortunately, I don't drink, mm-hmm. and I don't do any drugs, and mm-hmm. I, I'm not promiscuous, so... Uh, I just I don't do I don't do anything. I just go back to the hotel. I just basically like when you're on the road. Um, other than the hour that you do stand up, you know. Yes, you lay dormant. Well, you have the life of a drifter. <laughs> so a lot of it's trying to find food. But you know what I found is uh, as I travel through the country. Tell me, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, and this might be, uh, who knows, this might be profound. <laughs> well, 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 we'll write it down and analyze it. But I was in this uh, place called, I think it was called Malleville, Iowa, you know? Oh, uh, sure. But I noticed, like, the local comics, like, they'd get up and they'd go, uh, hey, man, uh, I was just in, Wa- I just came, I'm happy to be here, I just came from Wadsworth. And everyone <laughs> like, would, like, ah, they'd laugh, you know? So I talked to the guy, the owner, and he's like, oh, those guys from Wadsworth, they're idiots, you know? It turned out Wadsworth was just about, 18 miles uh, down the road from uh, from Malleville, Iowa, right? Who's booking you, Harriet Tubman? <laughs> <laughs> You're not letting me get to my profound no, point. No, I'm just, for God's sakes, these places don't even exist. Well, no, I'm just, I'm actually making up these what, names. What were you, at the Shady Rest this week? <laughs> Now, I'm making up the names to protect the innocent. All right. <laughs> and the guilty. <laughs> so get profound. Get profound. Yeah, I only have one profound thought every few years. All so right. The last thing I need is somebody, you know. Interjecting. Uh, no, no. No, I love interjecting. But listen, so I, I, would, I, I went on stage and I said, listen, folks, you know, you keep making fun of these fellas from Wadsworth down 18 miles down the road from you, <laughs> pretending they're all stupid. And uh, I'm sure they do the same for you, but you, you know, no one could be more alike than you guys, you know? Mm. And uh, and if there's any hope for the world... Anyway, he got no laugh. <laughs> Shocking. Pretty well destroyed my set, you know? Because <laughs> they're yelling, Wadsworth! Why do you go for Wadsworth, you know? And uh, But doesn't it show you something? Yeah, sure. How's the world going to get together if... Uh, <laughs> Malleville and, and... And Wadsworth can't even pull it together. Yeah, it's not that profound. That was the, that was the whole thing? <laughs> hey, I, met, I saw Matlock. <laughs> <laughs> Only you would refer to Andy Griffith as Matlock. Well, I, I, you know, I don't want to get too uh, arcane. Yeah, his real name's Andy Griffith, but um, now he calls himself Ben Matlock. Where'd you bump into him at? He was at the uh, airport. At the LAX. You're kidding me. Now, that would be a thrill for me. Oh, man, it was incredible because, like, I grew up watching the Andy Griffith show and then later when he changed his name to Ben Matlock. Yeah. So uh, (laughs) I'm standing there. So I see they have an Archie comic. I haven't seen Archie comics for years. Mm -hmm. And so I'm reading the Archie comic. He's reading a really big book, you know. Like, he's like you, you know. like real smart, you Mm -hmm. know, I guess. Yeah, he's he's, he's Andy Amaber. So I, I'm, I'm looking through my Archie book and uh, my Archie comic, which mm-hmm. I haven't seen in a long time. And uh, it was actually a good one, like uh, Jughead. Mm-hmm. He gets a job at Pop's Chocolate Shop. Yeah. And uh, Jughead is a, uh, you know, he's kind of a never do well yeah, for those of you who don't know him. <laughs> and uh, so it's kind of surprising to Archie and, and Reggie Mantle. Like they're like, what? Uh, Jughead got a job, you know? Exactly. Seems weird. Yeah, he's like a short order cook at Pop's Chocolate Shop. Yeah, he's like Screech with a squint. Exactly. And yeah. a crown. <laughs> so it turns out they're like at the end they're like Jughead, you never work. Like you're just a bum, you know, mm-hmm. that likes hamburgers, uh, likes to eat hamburgers. He says, "Yeah, that's right." And you know those big chef hats they wear? Mm-hmm. Jughead pulls his chef hat off. It's filled with hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> so the only reason he got the job in the first place yeah. was so he could uh, st- 
steal all these hamburgers from Pops at chocolate shop. Well, you know, they say that ninety percent of the heat in a human's body escapes through the head, so mm. actually to keep them in there is wise. It keeps the buns soft and <laughs> like pinks over at La Brea and Melrose. And by the way, I don't know if you've caught the new Archie, but Midge has to extend the restraining order on Moose from thirty to fifty feet. <laughs> <laughs> call in Gavin to Becker because Moose evidently on some anabolics and a little crazy at this little point. Little handsy. Norman, what do you got planned today? What are you going to do? Uh, well, I was going to tell you my Matlock story, but... Uh, no, no, go ahead. Sorry. I've got time. Go ahead. Recount. I thought you had to go. Go ahead. No, uh, I remember I was telling you about how I met Andy Griffith. Yes. So he's reading this big book, you know. Oh, right. so That's it. I say, I'll sidle up beside him mm -hmm. and pretend to read a big book myself, mm -hmm. you know, and then we'll get in a discussion, right? Because yeah. I didn't want to just bug him, you know. That's how you meet people. And I was hoping maybe he'd, uh, by some crazy chance, maybe recognize me or something. Mm -hmm. So I stand beside him, and he's reading and everything like that, and I'm, so I'm talking to him and everything. Uh, anyways, turns out the guy's not Andy Griffith. <laughs> Just an old man. So now I'm just talking to an old man who clearly uh, is always like uh, mistaken for Andy Griffith, but uses it, you know, because I'm like two minutes, three minutes, and who would talk? Who would talk to an 85 year old man? So this guy's just milking it, you know. <laughs> Ah, oh, Norman, I love you. I'll talk at you down the road. The Dennis Miller Show. <laughs> Lovely Norm McDonald has called in. Norm, <laughs> Storm and Norman, I've missed yeah, you. Yeah, if you don't have any plans for the fall. I believe me, I'd love to come down, and then we're going on the road with the gin game later in the <laughs> year. <aren't we? laughs> All right, what do you want to No, listen, about? listen, man, I... I like staying at home with my kid and then watching, uh, pretend I'm in show business, watching uh, th uh, trailers and going, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I say that a lot. And there's a kid impressed. And it, Ashton Kutcher. Hey, you want to hear a funny story about Ashton Kutcher? Love one. So he's on uh, the Jimmy Kimmel show. Right. And uh, Super Dave was telling me that. You know, Super Dave is really funny. Sure. Brooks's brother. So Super Dave was the other guest, so they said, like, before the show, they said, you can't ask a question about him going out with Demi Moore, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, Super Dave is not that, you know, hip to everything. <laughs> 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 like, he doesn't care and everything. So, anyways, halfway during the show, he said, uh, listen, Ashton, I don't know who you are, but uh, someone backstage told me you were dating Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Now let me ask you this, Norm. I, I think that and Super then Ashton Kutcher tried to go along with it. You know how guys try to be funny by going, "Yeah, yeah, right. we're on our third year dating." Uh, it's uh, you know it's already over, but the guys. Do you, I think that Super Dave's so brilliant that he knows exactly what he's doing? Oh right? no, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> I mean, he's as sharp as they come in that uh, that sort of guise of yeah. being the bumbler. But I know he he knew exactly that he's winding. What are you still uh, toying with the idea of the puppet act, or where are you telling me? Oh about? no, no, I, uh, what, you want to hear that guy? I, I just remember you telling me you were working on a ventriloquist act. Yeah, we don't call it puppet act, but thanks a lot, man, for the respect. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it now at all because the guy. That's a regular Johnny Carson move. Our next act is a puppet act. <laughs> we'll be coming out here with a puppet and pretending it speaks. <laughs> Norm, I, I, wait, wait, Norm, I have to tell you something that will make you laugh. Do you remember Gerbitz, our manager, used to used to handle a guy, or maybe he still does, named Ron Lucas, who, who was a puppet act. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was the sweetest guy in right. the world. So I, when I'm in Hollywood, I'm, I'm trying to impress Gerv, and I'm, I'm just new there, so I'm shooting from the hip trying to do that whole sardonic dentist thing. I go into his office one day, he's sitting there with Ron Lucas, and uh, Gerv says, this is Ron. Uh, he's a, uh, a ventriloquist, and uh, he got just got a new act he was telling me about. And I said, yeah? What, would you buy a lathe? <laughs> and, and the guy looked at me so crustful. <laughs> and I, felt, I have felt guilty about it to this day. So if anybody knows Ron Lucas, or indeed the puppet, my apologies. I was an insecure kid trying to act cooler than I was. But, no, uh, well, no that's, you, you owe no apology because those guys want to be comedians. 
Oh, they do. Yeah, yeah. So he should have, if he had any brains in his head, he should have gone, "Hey, man, can I use your lathe joke?" And then done it because <laughs> because the new thing, the new thing is, as you call it, the puppet act. We call it <laughs> ventriloquism. Oh, I'm sorry. It's like I didn't want post, I didn't want you to be slumming there. It's kind of postmodern ventriloquism where the he almost the uh, the act almost uh, you know talks about the. the the non-existence of the, you know, he, he cops to the fact that it's an inanimate object. Ah, You've heard that. that. A reductivist approach. To yes. That, actually, and yeah. they've also, I've noticed, they've exchanged, you know, they used to just have the wood, like you, your joke would work, the lathe, back in the, in the late 70s when you told it, right? But now, <laughs> <laughs> they've replaced the, the Charlie McCarthy's with these giant, much more likable Muppet-type characters. Oh, right, right, right. Right? So it would be like a... Because they they found they were making too many movies where the <laughs> where the antagonist of the film was a ventriloquist dummy, <laughs> <laughs> nothing but pure evil. Right. So then the ventriloquists were going, "Oh my God, this is not going to be good for my act." The malevolence <laughs> factor. So they went to a, like sort of a sleeping bag with a face on it, the yeah, big exactly. plush thing. That's what it looks like. Uh -huh. But uh, no, Rusty's wood, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, Saber Hagen, you have to isolate that quote. That that is going to be played regularly on this show. Rusty's wood, my guy, is the funniest thing I've ever. Heard. Yeah, man. Oh, tell me about Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's Rusty look like? What, Rusty? I know, I'll get him out of the bag in a minute, but listen, man, it's... <laughs> oh, he's shy sometimes. <laughs> but, what, what is that, uh... Well, listen, Norman, I can't tell you how good it is to hear from you. You know I think you're a genius. Wait, you know I love you. What, is it over? Well, we got I'm coming. I haven't played a commercial yet this hour. And, and... No, but are we, go are we going to do another bit after the commercial? Can you stay? Hold on, man. Let me ask Rusty. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back with the guys on the Dennis Miller Show. Hang in, Mark. Welcome back to the Norm McDonald Show. Co-starring, is his name Sandy? Rusty. 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 How many, how many, uh, uh, how many puppets do you have? I got three. Three in the bag? Yeah, I got uh, I got them cheaper because there were three. But I, these are not cheap. I paid a pretty penny for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, uh, one of them worked with uh, Paul Winchell. <laughs> this guy was a fortune. And uh, then he's uh, one guy, Rusty's the main guy. And plus, I got a book. <laughs> I do it. You know, hold on a sec. What the... <laughs> Uh, that's just Gervitz phoning. He's, he's phoning to ask me if uh, I'm I'm on with you guys. Should I take it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Gervitz checking up on you. We're all somebody's puppet, Norm. You know yeah, that's our exactly. plight in life. Wait, not, what, why do you keep saying puppet? Jeez, man. <laughs> I don't know what well, these personas that you have. What's the Winchell? Uh, real. They're as real as uh, yeah. You know anything real, like a person. One's uh, Rusty. He's my, as it says in the book, he's my uh, main man, <laughs> and he's just like an everyman. You know, he, this guy will say anything. And then there's uh, one puppet that's no good at all. That uh, he's just he's an old guy and he's uh, cranky about everything, right? Yeah, but also, he doesn't believe the Holocaust has. <laughs> he's like the worst puppet character ever. Like, you know, and everyone, I never want to talk to him. I never use him because it always comes back to that. <laughs> it's not the Steven Vermont. Is, the puppet isn't Steven Vermont. <laughs> no, he's the worst, man. The guy's like, the guy's just, first of all, he's playing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> He's not like an evil guy, just ignorant. <laughs> like old men will be. But anyway, the, and then the third one's Richard Nixon. <laughs> Actually. You can talk to any of them. I don't care. I, I know. I'm not talking to I'm not talking to old man Jenkins. <laughs> I am not a puppet. Thank you, Norm.
The Dennis Miller Show. We are joined now by comedian slash ventriloquist. And I still see he's acting, as I see a listing here on the sheet, that he will be appearing in Adam Sandler's new movie, Funny People, currently in production. That sounds like a fun shoot. I wish I was on that one. Norm McDonald, welcome to the show, Norm. Hey, Dennis. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Norman. Where are you guys shooting funny people at, and are you having fun with it? Oh, yeah, man. We're having a riot. I play a stand-up comedian. Wow, you're kidding me. What's the What's the movie about? Stand-ups in yeah, general? Yeah, about stand-ups and how they're actually sad or some, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Where's the shoot taking place, Los Angeles? Uh, they just pick me up in a car and I, I get out. <laughs> it's, it's somewhere in this time space continuum, though, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, I just didn't, you know, I wanted to be sure. Uh, who's who's in it besides you and Adam? Any other comedians? Uh, yeah, uh, Sarah Silverman, mm-hmm. the great David Tell. Oh. So it, it's chock full of uh, chock a block, as they say, bad in actors. England. <laughs> you snuck one in on me there, Norman. Now, what are you doing for the? Are you a big holiday guy? How do you how do you uh, help the human condition around the holidays? Do you do charity work, or do you just get out there and be Norm? Is that enough for the world? Well, no. Every year, I go down to the Laugh Factory. Uh, the great Jamie Masada has a, a Christmas thing where he opens the doors of the Laugh Factory to to the homeless. You know, so mm-hmm. I go out there with Freddie Stoller, and we. We ladle out some, you know, gravy and turkey. And uh, have you holiday. ever had a have you ever had a homeless guy in the middle of his set and you've come in and bumped him because you were on network? <laughs> no, no, television. no, they don't do sets. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, it's a they we give food to the home. Actually, John Lovitz is going to be doing a set this year, so it's not entirely free, <laughs> but <laughs> everything has its price. Guys out there, homeless people doing the 20-second injury timeout gesture. Hey, enough, liar. I'm trying to have some giblets over here, okay? Can you lighten up? Jamie wanted to tell me also that this this year uh, sex offenders are uh, welcome. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I got an early Christmas present from our our manager, Mark Gervis. What, did he send you the shortbread cookies or the caramel corn this year? He sent me a card... It said in lieu of a gift, he's going to give money to homeless people. Jesus, that's pretty presumptuous on him, isn't it? Yeah, no kidding. Who gets the tax right off on that one? Funny, I give to charity, plus I get gifts for my friends. But uh, Yeah, no, obviously not the case over there. Here's the thing about Gervitz. He does make the donation, then he hits the homeless guy up for 10%. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's absolutely brutal. They always get they always wet their beak over that, Drillstein, my friend. <laughs> Now, where are you going here? You're going to Cobbs in San Francisco, January 9th through 11th. Three, three days set there. What do you like to do during the days in San Fran to unwind? Do you go? I just work on my ventriloquism. Oh, you're, that, how's that going, Norm? It's going great, man. I, I thought Rusty and I would do a little holiday song for you. Oh, you're kidding me. Let me kick back here and put my feet up in front of the fire, you and Rusty. Which puppet is Rusty? Refresh me. Rusty's just my friend. You know, I, I'm having a lot of trouble with my... Uh, cranky old man uh, mm-hmm. i don't know if you remember old alec majerison the virulent anti-semite yeah sure i remember what are you kidding me i have a i have a plaque commemorating my first meeting i'm trying to get i'm trying to get rid of that guy because you know you know he's a holocaust denier that's no secret <laughs> he's an enthusiastic holocaust denier <laughs> and i've had it up to here with this character you know the, the man <laughs> he's just a waste of wood but I don't know what to do. One of my Jewish friends suggested that, uh, you know, why don't I just throw him in a fire and burn him? But I say two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> you know? Got to go. <laughs> but anyways, that's, we're not here to talk about that. Uh, let me get Rusty out here. Rusty. Uh-oh. Rusty, say hello to Dennis. Mm. Hey, Dennis. How, you, how are you? Hey, Rusty. <laughs> what? Hi, Rusty. Oh, hey, who's that dummy here, me or you? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it sounds like it's you. I'm sorry, Rusty. Let me give you my man voice. Hey, Rusty, how are you doing? Yeah, dummy. Hey, come on now, <laughs> Rusty. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Calling Dennis Miller a dummy on his own uh-huh. radio program. Now, what, can I jump in here for a second and tell you, here's how crazy Norm is. I'm sitting here believing that he actually has a puppet. 
Like, it, it's not enough for him to fake the puppet act on the radio and over the phone. He's actually, you did pull out a puppet and have it on your arm right now, don't you? Of course I have a, my pal Rusty here. <laughs> yeah. What do you boys have planned for us today, Rusty Norm? We're going to do a song according to this dummy. Would you stop calling me that? You're the dummy. You're the dummy. Now, listen. We're going to do a song, a beautiful song. Why? By the way, Rusty, what are you doing for Christmas? Are you going to see your family? Oh, sure. In my family tree, it's an actual tree. Okay, now that's just ridiculous. <laughs> you're actually overlapping dialogue here, Norm. You're not even putting a second between you and the puppet's voice. Now, R Rusty. Are you ready to sing that song with me? Sure. There you go. Okay, I'll start. Here we go. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw him, you would say that he was a drunk. <laughs> oh, come on! Well, that's ridiculous. What the? Come on, now, this don't ruin. This is a classic. I'm sorry. All right, now let's continue. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to town. Rudolph, with your nose so bright, have you been drinking some bathtub gin? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, now that's enough. That's way beyond the pale. Stop it, Rusty. Stop. I wish you'd kick the bucket. <laughs> Stop like, it. What? <laughs> kick the bucket. What are you talking about? You said pale. <laughs> Bucket. It's a synonym. Okay. All right. you, I, yeah, that's right. Okay, now that's ridiculous. You're the dummy. Okay. Stop. I'm sorry, Dennis. This is going nowhere. This is ridiculous. I apologize for rest. <laughs> Jesus, it's so crazy. It's gotten so crazy over the years. <laughs> I can't go on with this. This is this is, just, <laughs> this is just an abuse to the whole idea. All right. Now, what what separates Rusty's old man voice from the old Holocaust deniers' voice? What? Give me give me that you voice. Again. About, you don't want to hear from him, do you? Well, I know Rusty's just wetted the palate for Alex, a little more puppetry. I, guess, I swore I'd never use this guy. It's like the Stones doing Sympathy for the Devil after Altamont. Yeah, there we never go. Alex, see you play it Alec, how are you? Mm -hmm. I'm okay, I guess. Yeah, I suppose. What do, you, what do you think of this Christmas? What do I think of it? I'm not going to celebrate no holiday where a bunch of bearded New Yorkers killed our savior. Hey, hey, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> You're going back in the case. I'm sorry, Dennis. Oh, no. like that you didn't happen. quite you didn't quite have control of the posse today, but I realize it's the holidays are amongst us and uh, that they're a little petulant this oh, time of never, year. I can never keep these guys under control. Norm, you are an absolute wild man. We want you and yours, i.e. the satchel full of puppets, to have a Merry Christmas. And once again, uh, when is the date you'll be out there at the Laugh Factory, Jamie Masada's place? Is that January on Christmas Day? January 25th. And are, is the public welcome to come and help, or is it just a closed house event that Jamie does for the homeless? No, any anybody that can come that uh, doesn't have a place to go for Christmas. So you don't turn people away at the door if they have a home? Not at all. All right, I like to see that holiday spirit. Thank you, Norman. Ho, ho, ho. This is the Dennis Miller Show. But uh, no, Rusty's wood, my guy. <laughs> Wait a second, Saber Hagen, you have to isolate that quote. That that is going to be played regularly on this show. Rusty's wood, my guy, is the funniest thing I've ever. Heard. Yeah, man. Oh, tell me about Rusty. <laughs>